You know how many times I go to an audition, I hear this. Like my, this is my, a lot of people don't like to audition. I like to audition, and I'll tell you why, because I fuck with them. Because you're funny. You know, I've ripped my pants out. You know, if you watch, uh, uh, two, what's that show on CBS that's been on forever? I don't fuck Which one? The Monday Nights. The Big Bang Theory. The, the one before that, How I, how I, I, I Met Your one. Mother. Yeah. I did How, you know how I got How I Met Your Mother? I didn't even know you did it. Yeah, if you watch the episode, you're like, Joey, you're an extra. I'm an extra. You know why? Because I went into the audition. I had no underwear on. And there was this, you see these things that pop out of chairs? Yeah. The side things, the way you mm -hmm. do your armrests. Right. And she goes, get up to read. When I when I got up to read, the, came scene, the fucking thing got caught in the hole in my pants and my dick came out. <laughs> All three women sat there and I go, did you see the egg roll? And then I lost them for sure. They even told me, they go, you got the job. As I was walking down the street on Fox, my phone rang. My agent goes, go back. You didn't even read. I didn't even read, and they called my agent and said, we love this guy. <laughs> I went back, and when I went, they didn't saw even read. Dick. They saw uh, the Cuban egg roll. You know, well, but they were th probably not used to someone with confidence that didn't give a fuck. You know, I went to an audition one time, bro, where the guy had to, I'll never forget this, the guy was a white trash guy. Like, this family moved in. It was a pilot for ABC. And this guy uh, is one of those guys that uh, he had a little circular pool in front of his house. And he was he was water and shit, but at the same time he had like a thong on, and he's fat, and he's got jewelry on, like one of those guys in like Long <laughs> Island, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> so I'll never forget, I get to the audition, all these guys are there, Tony Longo, God rest his soul, all these big Italian dudes. And I knew they were going to get the part, bro. I'm like, they're going to get the part, I'm not going to get it. But I had warm-ups on. All right, I had warm-ups on with the string, and I had white, tidy whiteies. And I had a zip-up jacket, and I had to weigh 380. So I walked in. I go, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my pants off. And I said, <laughs> right? I'm taking my fucking sweats off. Dog, I walk in, and what do you think these two ladies say to me? Hold on one second. We'll be bit with you in a minute. So they turn around. That's my cue, bitch. I took those sweatpants off. I took the shoes off and my socks, and I walked closer, and I took my shirt off. When they turned back around, all I had was boxer shorts on, like the tidy whities That's it, tits hanging out, <laughs> stomach hanging over the underwear. And they, and they did, as soon as they turned around, they were like, oh my God. They're like, that is terrible. Put your shirt back on. I'm like, I'm not putting on shit, all right? I'm reading this motherfucker how it is. So you were supposed to like wave and say good right. morning. Right. And they're like, action. And, I'm, and they're like, can't even look at me because I'm completely <laughs> naked. You know, and they can't even look at me, and I'm making believe I'm flipping burgers, and I look over at them, and I go, living like a doctor. <laughs> That's it. They booked me. At, when I got to the audition, it's, that was the read. Living like a doctor. They even gave me my own line. Half of those auditions I went into, they gave me whatever line I said in the audition. Like, whatever they said wasn't good enough. Like, I go in there with my own fucking line. Yeah, that's that's probably why you got it. Look, look, look at Joey. He's just sitting there, there like a mook the door. That's when you were wearing those big daddy shirts. Yeah, all look the time. how big I was. Jesus Christ, you were enormous back then. That, was, that must have been like what two thousand then, right? God, yeah, this is two thousand, two thousand two, two thousand. I remember when I when I met you, like right after I met you, I brought you onto the set of news radio, oh, and they God. they were all like, um, wh "Who is this guy with the leather this, jacket on? Is this guy your friend? Like, I got that's Joey." <laughs> 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 you could tell that maybe he could a mingle on the other dog. side. You could talk him into switching governments if he's you got had a to kid and a, dog. and a dog. I know a lot of dudes like that that you look at and you go, a lot. Right. This guy Every could guy suck out there dick. Who, with a kid who's walking his dog is like, fuck, am I gay? No, 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 no. Do I want to suck dick? Or maybe you have uh, evil fantasies like Rob Halford and Hell Bent for Leather. Uh, you know that song? Oh, but you Rob Halford's whole evil fantasy. But he was gay as fuck. No, that's not saying that. I love Bob Halford. I love Bob Halford. I do Halford. too. But Sweating. I'm just saying that. You got another thing coming. There's a lot of fucking guys, dog, that you see, that you know. Maybe their dad's still alive and he was a Marine. You can't go <laughs> what home the fuck and does that mean? You can't go home and tell your dad who was a general, oh, oh, okay. I want to suck dick for a time. Oh, I see what you're oh, saying. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so I thought you were saying like, those while. guys, if your dad they was alive and he's a Marine, you, you want to blow guys. Joe Rogan, you're an intelligent. How many guys do you think are out there right now? We've had this discussion Millions. that are married, whatever, but every once in a while, they put a feather suit on. 
and they go dance like in anything. It's probably more than 10. And that's what <laughs> yeah. we used to, you know, we used to go down yeah. there. We were dumb kids. <laughs> we figured out we could rob these dudes that were drunk. They come down to get their dick sucked. <laughs> so we sure. them. We got the captain of police's son. So we weren't going to go to jail. He was better looking than you. We weren't going to go to jail. We put him out there. We put like a, 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 a guinea t-shirt, you know, those wife beaters <laughs> with a little gold chain with a cross <laughs> on it and up. shit. <laughs> the ultimate car thing. And we put him out there on That's Boulevard hilarious. East. And then we'd hide in the trees. <laughs> and then he'd go and suck your dick and the guy would park. And then he'd walk him back, and right <laughs> before I went to get that one knee, I come up with that straight right kick, John Jones to the fucking nutsack. God damn, you Joey. go down. We we're in the trees. We're hiding in the trees. <laughs> Fuck. We up, fucking shit. fly down from the trees. <laughs> and we just bam, bam, bam. We take your money. We run. We're sixteen guys. You know nobody fucking knows what's right. And what's not right. that. Young. My mother. No. Perfect guy and to rob. Was, Who's the, the guy's not going to the cops? He's not going to the cops. <laughs> and you got to remember, my crew was the third crew on. There was a crew from 64th Street. They were not only robbing you, they were taking you to your house. I had friends that were in high school that actually were getting, were setting you up. Yeah, let's suck your dick. And then they put you back in your car and go to your house and rob you. We were the light crew. We were just going down there peppering you with a few shots and running away hey, with you. So they getting their dicks my, my point about the story was there was one time where, where you... I got beat up. I went down there by myself. You went to, Yeah, you went, I went down, down there. I went down there by myself. I had yeah. the mix minus the eight and a half, and I only won by eight. So I got caught <laughs> by the hook, and I, and I called my buddy, and I go, dog, we lost. And he goes, I'm with my girlfriend. <laughs> but at the time, I'm with, yeah, you want it up. I'm hanging out with my buddies. We're hitting the bag. I go down there. I go down there, dog. I'm from Jersey. They ain't gonna do nothing to me. This dude lit me up. It was. It could have been Nunes' his uncle. <laughs> I'll tell you what I don't like is these fucking COVID tests. The one with the nose. Mm. Oh, like, my God. What a weird feeling. You know, here's the funny thing. Like, I did it, but I got the blood. I, I didn't trust. Like, listen, let me explain something to you. You don't want to put a cotton swab in my nose, dog. Right, what happened? I got angel dust, coke, <laughs> THC crystal, animal tranquilizers, asshole dust, fucking pubic hairs. I smelled Newark in the summer. What happened? I smelled coke, heroin, fucking. Are you kidding me? When they did my nose, asshole dust. I remember, oh, asshole dust. You look, open up an asshole, a little bit of dust comes out. Nobody knows nothing. You just take it like a man. Tomb. Like, you know, I remember when I woke up, Dr. Line was jizzling my nose, and the sparks were coming out of my nose and shit. I got, it still, I still got coke rocks in those glands in there. So you stick a cotton swab in there, and they're going to fuck it up, because you know they're making mistakes, right? So some grandmother's going to go, you know, some grandmother's going to go, you didn't test positive for coke, but you, get, you need treatment. Like, you need help. You got like 10 kilos in your fucking nose. <laughs> Who would go for that fucking stupid test and wait online oh and sit God. for 10 hours with 80 fucking thousand people? Well, the new one, they barely go inside your nose. They just go, they used to have to go deep up into your nose, but now they just go into the opening. It's not that bad. The new one's not that bad. It's like, you ever thought about this? We've never discussed this. This young generation don't know dick. And I did the fucking research. When I was growing up in the 70s, you got a thermometer in your asshole. Yes. They used to put a thermometer in your asshole. Think of the result of what that did to people. If we go backwards, <laughs> we're going to see how many people are gay because for years what? they were getting a thermometer put in their asshole. <laughs> By the time they're 16, what difference does it make? You would put a thermometer in my ass. You know how many times that doctor... I don't doctor, think that's how it works. The thermometer, it was the creepiest thing, people, okay? You went to a doctor, he'd tell you to bend over. Like you'd be burning up. You'd have one of those COVID fevers. He'd tell you to bend over. He'd dip the thermometer in Vaseline, and he'd stick it in your ass for like a minute. And you had to sit there with a fucking thermometer in your ass and look at him, like make eye contact and talk to him. Then he would take it out, wipe it, and then go like look real close and <laughs> tell you you're 91.1. You don't remember a thermometer in the ass, Joe Rogan? I remember them. You think about that <laughs> shit. I, I mean, remember them in the mouth, too. Well, yeah, I always felt weird tongue. about that because you have this metal fucking rod in your mouth. Under the armpit, too. Really? Never that was that one, one for a while. It's hard to believe, right? That's the best part of comedy. I don't give a fuck when anybody tells you standing ovations, selling tickets. 
the part of comedy you're going to remember is when you were with Brody Stevens in a car with Josh Wolf, and I got Brody in the back tied up in the fucking back in the Volvo, and I'm doing 100 <laughs> with his car, and he's yelling, stop it. Normal people do not live like this. <laughs> Every time I see Brody, I give him a hug now. Uh, Brock Lesnar ain't Steve coming back. back. Brock Lesnar ain't never coming back. Well, he's back. not going to come back and fight for a world title no, right away. But he but ain't you don't think so? Back, bro. No. I think if it's the, the That was the biggest embarrassment Good of the Lord, fucking year. That would year. be crazy That was the biggest fucking embarrassment of the year. Yeah, that Why dude. would that be? Embarrassment, bro. What was embarrassing? Just embarrassing him against Mark Hunt. They knew he was on the juice. He went in there loaded to the gills. It was just an embarrassing Get up, fucking Joey. thing. It was an embarrassing thing for everybody. And Mark Hunt had every fucking right to be mad. They put him in there with a guy that's coming off rocket fucking fuel. That dude don't just don't eat D-ball. Look at the size of his fucking head. He's taking shit that makes your fucking head grow. Okay? <laughs> that's what they get the fucking pit bulls. I bumped into him in 94. I kidnapped him in 87. I bumped into him in 94, and I bought Coke from him. <laughs> right? And he was all fucked up at, at, uh, at, on Pearl Street down in Boulder. And then he never remembered. I think he blacked out. That's how bad a shape he was in. I asked him. the last, the, Not this time, but the time before, I asked him, do you remember me buying blow from you? He goes, I remember seeing you, and I remember hating you the next day. <laughs> I couldn't believe I didn't knock you the fuck out because I caught him off guard. He was at a bar all fucked up. I'm like, you got to sell me some blow. He's like, ah, look who's here. The guy who kidnapped me. The guy, the guy who kidnapped me. But I called you him last You fought one. blow after, after you kidnapped Nine, him and before you apologized for kidnapping six him? Six years later, yeah. I saw him at, I saw him at a, a bar on Pearl Street. Did you even say, I'm sorry I kidnapped you? Not that night. <laughs> I just gave him a hug and asked him if he knew where I'd get some blow and shit. Not that night. And he gave me a hug, and I always thought about him. And when I apologized, I felt really bad. And I talked to him the other day, and he, and he started telling me he's 50. He lives with his mother. He had a heart attack. You know, I could tell when I talked to him in his pictures on Facebook that he had a stroke. You know, that was all from the blow, bro. Sometimes when he calls me and I could tell he's drinking, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel real guilty that I do this. But then, you know, I'm the type of guy I don't play that shit. You know, I don't play that shit at all. He was fucked up when I kidnapped him. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, a couple weeks before, you know, how we got, how this whole thing started was because he got a DUI, fucked up some cars, went to Boulder Hospital on, on North Hospital, Boulder General. Mm -hmm. And while he was in there, you know Boulder, he was hurt. They left him in a room by himself and he stole a bottle of liquid cocaine and jumped out the window. <laughs> okay, and they caught him an hour later on the other side of Boulder. <laughs> when you steal a bottle of liquor cocaine from the hospital, you already got problems. Okay? Oh my God. Me kidnapping him, you know, and we laugh and we giggle. Me kidnapping him makes me feel like maybe I contributed to that, but I didn't. He had his own doom. So Friday I went to the store, and I swear to God, guys, I didn't eat nothing all day. I had smoked some pot, I worked out. I went to the Y, I did chest and the, and the other thing, and I smoked dope. Before I left the house, there was a little brownie, a 70 milligram brownie. I had like maybe 13 carbs left for the day. I was, <laughs> I was fucking starving. This little brownie is right there. It was a half a pack of an Anarchy Edible. They give you two brownies. Oh. Each, each, each brownie is 70 milligrams. That's so crazy. I That's so my, scary. I rub my balls with 70 milligrams. You understand me? 70 milligrams for Uncle Joey is like an appetite. It's like an aperitif. It's not even a fucking but appetizer. Explain to the rest of the world, 70 milligrams will put you into a fucking hole. Do you know I gave right? Lee 500 last night? He puked. <laughs> 500? <laughs> Five, we split a Jesus Christ. We split a <laughs> Did you say 500 we milligrams? Split, we oh my split God. a thousand milligram edible. Did you hear that Allison Chain song, Down in a Hole? Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen to me, Doug. We split it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, my God. What are you trying to prove? By 7 o'clock, I was so fucked up. <laughs> By 8 o'clock. And you know what? Usually when you eat, you tame that animal. Yeah. Fuck no. This turned on me. <laughs> this edible turned on me, dog, like a savage. He beat me into submissions. At one point, I had the cheese doodles that belongs to the baby pirate's booty. Yeah. They were on the floor. They were just coming out of my face. I was just stuffing it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just stuffing pirate's booty in my face and a pear. And there was a bunch of fruit and pirate's booty. I couldn't stop. <laughs> I kept eating peaches and pirate's booty, pears and pirate's booty, cantaloupe and pirate's booty. I must ate the whole, even my wife was like, because I had my back turned to them so they couldn't see me. <laughs> my wife's like, what the fuck are you doing in here? I go, listen, I got to go to bed. She goes, go to bed already. I went to bed at 8.45. I slept till 4. I got up. I didn't know where I was. I just laid there for 30 minutes like Mad Max. I just laid there all confused. <laughs> 
So you woke up at four in the morning and didn't know where you were? Solo. At four thirty, I woke up with a ton of energy. <laughs> ton of energy. I went in the shower, I washed the car. I went for breakfast. Oh. I went and washed the car. My wife had to have a bug a tar stain. So oh I went my I said, God. Oh my God, I was fucked up. And That's I kept so calling funny. Lee. And saying, Lee, if the cops call you, don't answer the phone. He goes, why are the cops on the call? I go, I don't know, but don't answer. But one of the worst things that ever happened to me was when I drowned at the YMCA that time. That <laughs> That's the title of your book. That's the title of your book. Oh, my God. As a fat guy, I was never more embarrassed in my fucking life, man. I've done some fucked up shit as a fat guy. And I don't, you know, you get embarrassed about being fat. You can't fat shame me. But the time I almost drowned at the Wiley fucked me up. I didn't say nothing for like two months. I didn't say nothing. I just snorted coke and tried to hide it and shit. That was embarrassing, though. I was just starting to lose weight. Things were going great for me. I lost like eight pounds. I was still snorting blow. I was doing big blow. And I fucking got up one morning and Terry went to work and I overslept <laughs> and I said fuck it I gotta swim and I went over to the Y and the Y is packed I used to go to the fat man pool it's this little Russian pool right it was like four feet but it was 96 degrees so it's like a therapeutic pool and I would walk around and then if there was nobody in there I would do laps and then you could it's short laps and nobody would see you if you go to the big pool Lee, there's kids and people see you and there's lifeguards I was still too embarrassed I'm not going to be a fat guy who wears a t-shirt in the pool. No. But I am. Fuck, I, fuck I am. I'm a hot mess. You don't want to see so me. So I said, fuck I it. I keep all this I'm here. Gonna, I'm going to fucking. I'm going to go in there without a t-shirt. Lee, I was 400 pounds. There was fat everywhere, Lee. And I'd sit in the sauna and I'd make believe like I was losing weight in the sauna. Then I'd go in the steam bath. Then I'd jump in the pool. And I'd do this every morning at 5 a.m. I did this to start off, but I was still snorting blow. So in my mind, if I ate sushi and I went to the steam room, I would sweat the cocaine out. I wasn't a fiend no more. So now it's 2 in the afternoon, Lee. I go across the street to the Y. I'm still a little hungover on the blow. And the fucking steam pool is packed with, with kids jumping up and down. And I'm like, I can't do my fucking laps. But the adult pool, the lap pool, was wide open. Oh, shit. I go, fuck this. I swam when I lived in Boulder. I've been swimming for three weeks. I'm ready for the big fucking pool. Why am I swimming with these fucking fat fucks for? I went over there. I put my name on the blackboard, guys. I put my goggles in. And on the deep end, I jumped. Just the, the cold water hitting me, bro. It just shocked my body. Just shocked my fat little body. And then I'm trying to swim. I'm swimming. I'm putting everything I can. I'm turning my head. I'm remembering my form, and I look up, Lee, and I haven't even moved like five <laughs> feet. I'm fucking sideways. But by this time, I'm out of air. Like, I was smoking two or three packs of cigarettes a day. I'm dying. I'm ten feet out, but I can't swim back, and my feet can't take it. So I'm just holding on to the rope, and people are swimming <laughs> by me. They're going, come on, let go of the rope. Come on, swim. And I'm like, guys, I'm dying. I'm trying to get the, the, the shortest distance was this way. If I swam vertically to the fucking wall, I'd never make it. So I had to swim this way. So I pulled myself like Spider-Man <laughs> throughout the room. <laughs> and I get to the wall, and I'm huffing and puffing, guys. I mean, guys, guys I was fucked up. Seriously. That's when I realized this has to end. And I'm holding on to this, and I can't kick no more. And I'm out of oxygen, and I'm holding on. And I got my fucking chin on the thing, just holding me. And some kids are like, Mr., Mr., are you okay? And I'm like, no, I'm not okay. Help me. And they're like, come on, pull them out. And all these little kids get together, these little Mexican kids, and they're trying to pull me out, and they can't pull me out. God they're like, one, two, three, oh. pull. And they're pulling, and I'm like, and I'm turning purple, Lee. <clears throat> I mean, Lee, I'm not breathing. I'm not, I don't even know about breathing through my nose. I'm starting to panic. People are starting to circle and look around, and these little kids can't pull me out. They're like, fuck it, ring the buzzer, and they ring this buzzer. And it's going, wah, wah, wah. And all of a sudden, this chick gets on the thing, and she turns this, <laughs> this thing around, and they're actually going to make me, listen to this, they couldn't get me out, so they were going to fucking drop a hoist 
into the pool and they wanted me to swim into it and then they were going to pull me out like a fucking whale, like orca. And by this time, there's 50 people watching me. You have any idea, Lee, how embarrassing that is? I got tits, they're by my stomach. <laughs> Lee, I'm purple. And they're like, swim to the middle. That must have sucked. Get to the middle. Get to the middle and go in and we'll drop the hoist. And the hoist will pull you out. And then we'll bring you to the side. Lee, by that point, I'm so fucking embarrassed. And now, out of the corner of my eye, I see ambulance tech workers running in with a fucking mattress. Like I got shot in Vietnam. And something made me put my fat little foot over. I just went, oh, and my fat foot got over, dog. Oh, my God. That thigh must have weighed a 1,000 pounds. And I fucking pulled myself up, and I rolled down like orca. I just rolled down to the pool. I got up, and I got up right in time. As I went through the fucking door, the three ambulance workers were running in. They're like, where is he? Like, that's him. And I just walked right past him, dog. Because rule number one, don't stop and don't sign nothing. You don't need to get checked out. Mind your business. You're fine. You know, as long I, as you get I, to your car.